Today I want to talk to you guys about the DJI Digital FPV system and talk about two things. I want to talk about the Digi Adapter faceplate which is now available for the FPV system which is a plug and play analog modification which in my opinion is the cleanest and tidiest solution that I have seen for this period and secondly I want to talk to you guys about Ardrapilot getting support for the DJI FPV system as well. Now the Digi Adapter faceplate is a new modification that's been released which consists of a replacement front faceplate, a couple of plug and play wires and it allows you to add analog support for your goggles in the cleanest way that I've seen yet. And whilst we have had adapters that go on the head strap on the side and we've also had some 3D printed brackets faceplates, this is an off-the-shelf solution that allows you to simply replace the faceplate plug the cables in and you are ready to go. So taking a closer look at the Digi Adapter. Now it isn't 3D printed or anything like that. It is injection molded. And this is, as I said, by far the cleanest solution for getting analog on DJI FPV that I have seen. It costs $44.99 in the UK and it is a replacement faceplate which has the module bay that you can fit any standard module into. You can then simply plug it in, replace it. So you take your two screws out take the existing faceplate off, replace it with this one. It has all the electronics on board already. You simply plug in the power connector, the analog connector, and that is it. It is done and dusted. And it is, as I said, the cleanest and tidiest solution that I have seen. And I really do not know why DJI did not do this at the start, because it would have close to have made it the perfect system. Now, just looking closely at the specs a little bit, it weighs 34 grams, the faceplate, and it has the port in for the power and video. It's 17.6 volt DC, maximum 1.5 amps. And it basically gives you a loop through cable for the power as well. So you put the power connector in, one goes to your goggles, one goes into the Digi Adapter. And it really is as simple as that. Now, you can order it directly from these guys. It is out of stock at the time of filming this because it is extremely hot property. There is a link to their website in the description of the video as well, but by far the cleanest and tidiest solution for getting analog FPV on the DJI system. And you can use it with your traditional uh, module, no problem at all. And it's compatible with the standard stuff, TBS Fusion, Rapid Fire, all of the usual suspects as well. So check it out if you're interested to get one. I'm going to get one myself on the channel, just not going to be able to until they actually get them back in stock. Next, I want to talk to you guys about Ardrapilot support for the DJI FPV system. Now, the DJI system for its telemetry and OSD uses MSP. Ardrapilot traditionally uses Mavlink, and unfortunately, the two haven't been compatible. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've been bugging the developers a little bit, as has a number of other people. I'm not the only one. And I was put in touch with one of the devs who'd been considering looking at this. After a couple of messages back and forth, he decided to take a look, and I ended up doing some testing for this on the bench. And it's now got to the stage where they have built an MSP library for Ardrapilot that allows you to use the digital FPV system for it. Now here and now this library is not in the master or current release builds and it is in alpha testing. If you are interested in actually trying this, I will put a link to the Ardrapilot forum in the description of this video. You can request a build for your specific autopilot and actually help test this and bring it out there. Now, over the last week or so, I've been actually talking to the developer quite late at night sometimes, because we both tend to not sleep a lot, and he's been sending some files over, I'd been testing it on the bench, then it got to the stage where I was ready to put it in the air, and I was very lucky to be the first person to actually fly the DJI FPV system on Ardrapilot, and then help the developer with some of the issues. And it's been fantastic to see just how fast they've been able to actually do this. It was literally a couple of days they had a virtually fully working system. And whilst it is slightly needs some tweaks here and there, it is 95% there here and now, and it is just fantastic to see it. Now, for me, I just want to thank the Ardrapilot team for allowing me to bug them slightly on this one. Literally, I was just doing the bench testing with the hardware because they didn't have one, but it's great to see. And if you're interested in checking it out, again, 
go to the thread, request a build for your specific autopilot, and you'll be able to upload it, whether it be on a quad or a plane, and actually test it with the FPV system as well. I'm still doing some testing on this as well. Weather has actually held me back over the last couple of days, so I haven't actually been able to get out. Um, but other people are getting on board now as well, so we're going to see the development move on much quicker than me just doing it on my own. Okay, so to just show you the OSD in action as much as I can. Now I'm sitting on the bench, I've got my F450 turned on, which I've been testing this on, and I've got my GoPro in my goggles. And what I'm just going to do is give you guys a quick overview of what you're actually getting. Now, if you look at the screen, you will see that we have all of the usual OSD information that you would expect. In the top left corner, we've got our GPS sat count. We then got our battery voltage, current, milliamp hour used. Further down, you can see you have a flashing icon, which is telling us that our home point isn't set and this is also the arrow next to that as well that shows us the direction to our home point in the middle we've got our ladders also showing us our flight mode and as well next to that you have an information display as well which is actually reading you out the messages that you get in Ardra Pilot so the warnings and things like that and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second and then moving over to the right hand side you have your altitude data your pitch your roll your speed and all of the usual stuff in the center at the top we've got our lat and long for our gps position and in the center at the bottom we then have our battery used compared to the settings that we've set in ardra pilot to start with now all of these osd options are movable so you can change them around and i'll show you that in a second in mission planner as well now as i said in the middle of the screen we do have this option that shows us the current mode and you can see it flashing giving us some information as well now the real nice thing about this is that it it will actually read you information about what's going on on your system. So now I've turned my remote control back on, you can see that it's actually showing us the correct information on the screen and it is now scrolling that information from the messages section within Andra Pilot on the display for you. So for instance, if I now change the mode to loiter, you can see that it flashes for a second and then go solid to say we're in loiter. We can then show that it says alt hold or position hold and then go down to altitude mode and as you can see it's then given us our stabilized mode that we're sitting in now then i can simply flick down into auto tune and it will tell us about that and then it will read out that error message on that little display as well and if i chuck it down into return to launch it will then show us that as well now this is a very nice section of the software and it's been really very well done and it's cool to be able to actually see the message information that you're getting scroll along the display and be shown within the osd now you can move all of these options around as i've already said and to do this you need to do it from your ground station so for instance i'm going to show you this in mission planner you would simply go into the main pram section and search for MSP. This will then bring up all of the options for the OSD information on the display. For each OSD information, there is three options. You've got an enable option and then a X and Y position for adjusting where it is on the screen. So just to show you this, if I go down to milliamp hour, it currently has a one, which means it's set as showing on the screen. If I hit zero and write the pram, and if you look in the top left hand corner, you will actually see the milliamp hour display will simply turn off because I've turned it off and then if I put a one back in hit right on the pram the option will then reappear we then have the option position info so we've then got the x and the y to set the position so the y is the vertical position is currently at number five if I then set that to eight for instance click right you can see that it will move further down the display and then if I wanted to move it further along I could say set it to 40 hit right pram and it would then jump across the screen it's gone over the top of the existing one set it to 60 right the pram you can then see it's jumped right across set it to 70 right the pram and again you can just adjust it until you get it in the position that you actually want it again got it now in the center of the screen there so you can adjust the position of it very simply or if i set this back to one hit right 
it will then level it up on the left hand side. Now it does take a bit of playing to get them in the correct positions but it is very quick and easy to be able to move them around and you can simply turn the options on and off depending on what you want. Um, we've got voltage bat enables so if I change that to zero click right you'll see that we've lost the battery voltage turn that one back on click right and it will reappear and that is basically the adjustments for the OSD and whilst it's not quite as nice as you have in uh, say Betaflight where you can drag the options around the screen it isn't very difficult to set up and once you've got it all in the position you want it you're ready to go. Now that is pretty much it for this video. If you would like to support the channel, there is a link to the DJI goggles in the description. It is an affiliate link, which means I will receive a small commission at no cost to yourself. Alternatively, if you'd like to support the channel through donation, there is a PayPal link in the description of the channel as well. It is only by you guys supporting us through purchases or donations am I able to keep making videos and hopefully provide you guys information that you find useful. Finally, there is also a link to 3DXR who sell loads of the autopilot and everything for using with Ardra Pilot. And as I've also said, there is a link to the thread for using the digital FPV system with Ardra Pilot 2. Further to that, if you are a Bite Frost user, please do check it out as well because there is support for the DJI FPV system. It also should work with Bite Frost as well, and they are looking for people to test that one too. That is it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, please do hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell as well. Thank you for watching, and I will do another video again soon.